Namaskar. It is New Year according to the Western Gregorian calendar and let me use this opportunity to wish all of you a year full of uh, good health, of bliss and happiness. Today is uh, the 2nd of January and uh, tomorrow morning, starting the 3rd of January, uh, the Indian government has announced that it will start uh, administering vaccines to children between 15 and 18 years of age. Simultaneously, it has also announced that it is ready for a booster dose for those in, uh, for the health workers who are in uh, working in the critical care uh, situations and also for those who are about 60 years of age but who have some comorbidities and who are so uh, declared or certified by their doctors. There are of course a lot of questions whose answers are not yet available. Uh, a few answers and, and a few uh, speculations are beginning to trickle in and it is important for us to be informed and take a, a very informed consensual decision on this. Unfortunately, the announcement by the Prime Minister uh, has begun on a wrong note because only 24 hours prior to his announcement, there was a press conference by uh, the ICMR uh, scientists and uh, doctors and physicians who are at the helm of the medical bureaucracy. Two pertinent questions were, one, what about boosters? Is the Indian government preparing to administer boosters like in the Western countries? And they replied that we are still looking at it because there is no scientific evidence yet for us to uh, have a blanket uh, uh, booster dose for those above 60. Then they were asked about children and to which they answered that all scientific evidence so far uh, point against taking this step. So we are still uh, going to assess all, this, all the uh, emerging data as it continues to reach us. And just 24 hours later, on 25th December, uh, the Prime Minister uh, makes a statement announcing these very two uh, actions, which of course has raised a question as to what happened exactly between 24th night and 25th night. And uh, somehow our Prime Minister always chooses the night time, you know, to, to, to shake us. And, uh, and, and then we spend restless nights wondering about what's going to happen. Now, the question uh, about how it will be administered has been partly answered later. Uh, they have sent out a circular saying that those about 60 years of age will need to be a certificate from their doctors. But again, uh, what are the conditions for the doctors to prescribe this? And which particular vaccine to take for those about 60 years? Whether they continue to take the one they took earlier or they can take any one which is available or they have to perforce take the one they have not taken. These are all the speculations flying in the air. Uh, a little bit more, uh, you know, proper uh, procedural methods in making such announcements will save us a lot of sweat and bother. The other question also, of course, is about uh, the, the children. Uh, allowing uh, vaccines to be administered to children 15 to 18 raises a lot of questions. I have uh, studied these questions and the research available worldwide regarding it and I'll put it down to five or six key points. I will also mention my conclusion right at the beginning. Uh, you know, I'm not going to wait for you for any suspense in the end. And uh, the reason for this video is that I find from my evidence that there really is no question of administering vaccines to children. And even to those young below 30 years of age for that matter. So let me take these points one by one. Point number one, children have such a tremendous innate immunity that they are at near zero risk of any severe effect of COVID or death is just uh, absolutely in uh, minuscule numbers all over the world. In the US, for example, they have even calculated uh, that uh, the chances of children dying from accidental drowning is more than they're dying from COVID. Children have been the least affected. They have the most innate immunity for various reasons because naturally that is the way that uh, our babies are strengthened in the natural process. 
and they have uh, a, a fantastic amount of immunity also arising from from mother's milk and the process of their uh, formation of their bodies during the first 10 12 15 years gives them tremendous innate immunity now what is it that uh, uh, we see specifically in india unfortunately right from the beginning of this crisis the indian government does not either collect or it collects and does not make transparent the age wise uh, cases of covid and the hospitalizations and the deaths but i did come across a very recent uh, useful study from chennai which looked at the mortality rates uh, its purpose was different it was looking at uh, uh, the covid mortality and comparing it to uh, the the expected mortality and then uh, trying to analyze and find out what are the excess deaths now what we got from that research as a by product is that the expected uh, death suppose covid had not existed the expected deaths of children which should have continued actually was far less during covid yes uh, this is of course not true uh, as the age group goes higher but for the children it's amazing that the statistic shows what science has always known that children have so much innate immunity there's no need to immunize them with a covid vaccine now point number 2 what if we have a question are yaar it doesn't matter but just let's give it to them yes we could have if it was a harmless vaccine it is not let us try and understand that the conventional process of making a vaccine using an inert uh, uh, virus is not the case this time except for india's bharat biotech vaccine all the others are using a very modern a very untested a uh, method which involves the use of rna and now even a, even a dna based uh, messenger rna and messenger dna vaccines which are injected into the cells now what they are telling the cells is actually the formula to create this virus inside our bodies to create fresh viruses it is actually passing on the genetic code taken from the virus and depositing it in our cells now this is so new that uh, many many uh, leading scientists and physicians and and even nobel laureates in fact even the person who invented mrna uh, technology has said that this is can be highly dangerous we don't know what the effects will be now considering that and considering that children are in the age group where they are going to live for the next 50 60 70 years should we be taking this enormous risk you know when when they are they are at near zero risk from covid and then to inject into them you know a uh, a uh, uh, a vaccine which may have some long term effects many long term effects of which we are not even aware of now we have some inkling of what the uh, side effects could be because for those uh, for the young healthy people for those below 40 below 35 a large number of cases of blood clotting and a large number of cases of myocarditis all these have been recorded and they have been studied and they have been published in medical journals and because of which many countries in western europe have uh, said they will stop the use of some particular vaccines for those below 30 now knowing all these facts and combining it with our point number 1 does it make sense to even try and approach uh this process of injecting this into our children the third point uh, about this is that children and young adults have been have shown throughout the study of 24 months of data from all over the world that even for the younger adults uh, vaccinating them we did it in panic but hindsight shows that natural immunity is a much better process people who have been naturally immune are far stronger far more durable and for those below 45 for those below 50 uh, 99% of those uh, have covid symptoms which are very mild in particular now that the omicron scare is there even though um, for the scientists and physicians are saying there's nothing to be scared about the omicron in particular points us against vaccines rather than for it let me explain this the omicron virus is something seen to replicate rapidly it spreads fast but it is very mild in fact milder than the flu 
and therefore many eminent scientists one in particular from Israel and one from uh, UK have said gone on record and said that this is working as good if not better than the vaccine because you get the Omicron which means once you have exposed to the virus you have tremendous and strong natural immunity for a very long period of time for even the variants because that is what science shows, shows us that if you are naturally uh, uh, acquired immunity through infection then you have uh, a resistance to multiple even future variants which may come. So considering that Omicron is spreading fast, but it is so mild, why not let it go in the community like the flu virus? And if this is a great opportunity because it also shows us that while this COVID is going to become endemic, endemic means all of us are going to get it sooner or later. This is what all epidemiologists are saying now. Only a few intelligent ones said it at the beginning, but all the others have now accepted that it is endemic. All of us must get it sooner or later. Omicron seems to be a good um, way to expose the community to it because already most places in the world have reached 80 to 90 percent population immunity through the natural process. What is the need now to target our children only so that some vaccine manufacturers can benefit? Think about this. A last point about what is the government's uh, position on uh, your taking this vaccine or on your deciding that your children should take this vaccine. Now, only last week, the government, central government, has made it clear in an affidavit to the Supreme Court that vaccination in India is voluntary. It has always been voluntary. Despite many attempts by many other smaller organizations, other uh, uh, governmental organizations, and indirectly to put pressure on you to take the vaccine, the fact is legally, and morally, according to me, it is voluntary. And it is important to know this. I know many people in millions have taken the vaccine only out of fear of harassment, that you will not be allowed to go here, you will not be allowed to go there, and that's why let's take it. I know we have, many of us have done it. But uh, when it comes to your children, I think we have to think again. Uh, not just children 15 to 18, like this step is going to start tomorrow, but also if you have children who are uh, below 30 and who really feel why should we take it, please listen to them. And you also please educate yourself from all quarters, not just the mainstream media, which quotes only the medical bureaucracy, bureaucracy and governments, which are unfortunately uh, too close for comfort with the pharmaceutical companies. Vaccination is voluntary and you can also decide to wait and watch because the, the, all these vaccines are still experimental. They are not even declared as proper vaccines based on uh, clinical trials with all phases completed and with data made available for peer review and transparently available for all. No, not yet. So that's another point. You can tell your doctor, you can tell your uh, whoever is trying to force you to give it to your children, that look, I don't mind taking it, but let it be cleared as a formally correct and proper scientifically tested vaccine, which it is not. It is still experimental and uh, we are basically making the whole population into guinea pigs. There is a huge and strong case for natural immunity, which is not anti-science. On the contrary, People who are actually anti-science are anti-nature because uh, science is a part of nature. The way nature uh, has evolved, the way all organisms are evolved, to study and understand that is science, is proper science. And that proper science shows us what a resilient and wonderful method nature has provided for all of us. But say 10% of us, for some reason, do not have that naturally acquired immunity. For those 10% we could have given the vaccine and solved this whole problem right at the beginning without creating such a panic. Some food for thought. I do not want to panic anyone, uh, uh, especially uh, after a nice celebration of New Year's Eve, unless you were prevented from <laughs> celebrating because of this fear. But all I want us is to be aware uh, and, and, and put our best foot forward uh, when it comes to thinking for ourselves and taking informed decisions in 2022. All the best. Stay healthy. Stay happy. Namaskar.